Learn to make a fully working Battle Royale game you can play with friends using my Udemy course. Try for $13.99 using the link in the description. Hello, welcome back. In this video we're going to be doing bullets. And so we'll add the ability to shoot. If I drag this sphere pawn in, if you guys remember in the last video we added the sphere pawn and we possessed it. And you can fly him around and he does all kinds of lovely spherical stuff. Um, but what I thought I'd do is I thought we'd make him shoot stuff. So you can click your left mouse and then it will shoot projectiles. And currently, obviously it does not do that. <laughs> if you click the mouse, there's no shooting. Um, but I, I wanted to go a little bit more into components in Unreal and sort of a little bit of Unreal Engine philosophy, if you will. I know, philosophy, it sounds very deep, but whatever. Anyways, um, like I said, components, there's kind of a component for everything. And uh, if we drag an empty actor in, there's actually a component that will handle um, bullet and projectile movement. And um, I, I dragged an empty actor in. I'm going to add a static mesh and I'm going to add a projectile movement. And watch this. Okay. <laughs> That's not a good mesh. Let's get a bit of mesh. Cube. If I hit play. You can see that it gets shot across the level. Um, that is literally just a component that does that. There's a, a component called the projectile movement component, and its job is to do projectile movement. Now, if you were in an engine like Unity, you would have to write your own projectile movement, which technically probably wouldn't even be that hard, but the fact that Unreal Engine does it for you, um, and then gives you a bunch of extra functionality too, like, like check this out, if we add the projectile movement component, I mean, look in the details panel here. You've got the initial speed, max speed, whether the rotation of the actor should follow the velocity, um, the gravity scale, whether it should bounce or not. So there's a ton of like really, really cool functionality in here that would really suck to have to write this yourself, to be honest. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, we're going to add bullets and shooting to our uh, actor and we'll start by going to project settings, input, and we'll add an action mapping and we'll call the action mapping fire and we're going to make that the left mouse button you can make it a different button if you want but i'm going to make it the left mouse button now before we jump into the coding what i want you to sort of understand is the concept of composition and this is going to come in handy because one day when you're a professional video game developer and someone tells you to make something in unreal engine you kind of need to know whether to make a component or whether you should make an actor. Now, in our C++ classes, we made that custom actor. We made a sphere pawn. Um, we're going to be making a bullet as well. But, you know, th those are custom actors. And we made a custom pawn as well. That's what this is. This is a pawn. Um, but you can also make custom components. And, and kind of what we want to know is, well, when should you make a custom component? And when should you make an actor? A component. You want to make a component when you need reusability. Right, so for example, if we look at the static mesh component, right, here it is here. So this ball is a static mesh. There are tons of stuff that needs a static mesh, right? Our player, this guy over here, needs a static mesh, or he needs a, a type of mesh, right? So there are tons of things that need a mesh. So that would be a component. You'd want to make that a component. The camera is a component, camera component, because lots of different things might need a camera, right? So generally, when you're going to be reusing something a bunch, you really want to make it a component. A really good example is I was working on a game where lots of things need inventories, right? Your player needs an inventory to hold items. Enemies need inventories to hold their items so you can loot them when they die and stuff. Um, chests and drawers and stuff that you can loot, they might need an inventory because they've got to have items inside of them to loot. So we made the inventory a component. We made an inventory component and you can add it to anything, right? So that anything can have an inventory. Um, so that's one example of like how a component would work versus an actor, or when you'd want to use a component. And the, the official term for this is called composition, although I'm, it doesn't really matter, but that, that, that's the main thing. When you want to reuse something a bunch, use a component. If you're just going to make things that there'll be sort of one of, like the character, there's just going to be like one of the character, or there'll be a few of them, but they're all the same, right? Um, then you would make an actor, or a character, or a pawn, or whatever. So yeah, um, yeah, let's do it. Let's make a bullet. Um, to get started, you want to go to File, New C++ Class, Actor, Next, 
and then just type in bullet. Now I've already made one called bullet, but yeah. And then click on create class. So the bullet needs a couple of things. It needs a mesh so that we can see the bullet. And it also needs a projectile movement component to handle the movement. And, and you know, we could go crazy and we could write our own projectile movement. But the one that comes with Unreal is so good that there's really no reason to, you know, there's no, there's no reason to reinvent the wheel, basically. So what we're going to do is we're going to come down to this little section here that says protected. And um, I'm just going to make a U static mesh component. And I'm going to call this bullet mesh. And because I want to be able to play around with this inside of the Unreal Editor, I'm going to use my U property. And I'm going to say edit anywhere so that we can edit this in the, in the blueprint menu and stuff like that. And if you do this, you do need to give it a category. And just like last time, we're going to give it the category name components. And then we're going to do one more component. And this one is going to be the projectile movement. So U projectile movement component. And then I'll call this bullet movement. And we will need a forward to clear this. Okay. So um, if you remember inside of sphere pawn in the constructor, we had to do that create default sub object stuff. So basically we just have to do that all over again. So um, we're going to go down here, bullet mesh equals create default sub object, U static mesh component. And then you have to give it a name. We're going to call it bullet mesh. And we're going to set that as the root component. So set root component bullet mesh. And then we're going to go ahead and do the movement. Okay. Um, now, we do, I think we need to include the header file for this. I think it's like include game framework. Oh my God, this is annoying. Glasses, game framework. Oh my God, I'm so lucky. I actually remember this. There we go. Yeah. So you want to type include classes, game framework, projectile movement component, and then it should work. Um, I, I really have no idea how I remember that, but yeah, anyways. Uh, so inside of the bullet movement, there are some properties that we need to set. So um, the initial speed of the projectile, I'm going to set that to be, say, like, I don't know, 2000. So we're just kind of setting up the default values. In fact, it actually has a comment auto generated for us here saying set default values. Uh, and then I think there's one called like max speed. And we're going to set that as well to be 2000. And that's like, I guess that's pretty much it. So if I go back into my sphere pawn class, you can see that we have some functions for moving around, turning, looking up, etc. I'm just going to add one more, and this is going to be called void shoot. So it's literally just a function that is going to shoot a projectile. So let's right click on that and let's create an implementation, or you can click that one actually if you want. And now we have a function that will handle shooting. And now we just hook this up basically. So inside of our setup player input component, so far we've just done bind axes, but for one time things like shooting or jumping, you actually want to use bind action. And an action is kind of like a one time thing. And we'll call it fire. And what we'll do is we'll do IE pressed. And basically that's saying if we press it once, then do that. There's also ones like double tap. So maybe you want the user to have to double click to shoot. You could use double click as well, but I'm just going to go with pressed this and then the uh, function that we want to call, which is shoot. And there you go. So now basically when the user clicks the left mouse button, it's going to call this shoot function. Okay. So our next challenge is how do we actually shoot the bullet? So the bullet is literally just an actor. So technically shooting the bullet is just spawning in the, the bullet that we made. Um, so then the question is how do we spawn the bullet? And the way that we spawn the bullet is the first thing we need to do is get the world. So the world is kind of like where all the actors are and all the levels and stuff. They're all inside of the world. And you can get the world very easily by just doing get world. Uh, any actor can easily just get the world by calling that function. And inside of there, there is a spawn actor function. So that's how you spawn an actor. Um, you do need to specify which type of actor you're spawning in, I do believe. So 
um, we're spawning in a bullet. And actually, let's go up to the top here and include bullet.h. Okay. So, um, yeah, you can see spawn bullet. And, and well, what does this function want? The first thing it wants is the class to spawn. And then it wants the transform, aka where do we want the bullet to be spawned. And then the next thing it wants is some active spawn parameters. So let's, let's do the spawn parameters first. So if we type active spawn parameters, and then we'll just give these a name. I'm just going to call this spawn params. And the spawn parameters is just like a bunch of stuff to do with the spawning of the actor. Um, some notable ones are this one, spawn collision link. Oh my god, I can't speak. Spawn collision handling override. That will basically, there you go, method for resolving collisions at spawn. So basically, um, there are all of these options here. And it'll just do different things if the actor is colliding. Say you spawn an actor inside of a wall. Do we want to adjust the position or just spawn it inside the wall? Or, you know, how are we going to do this? I like to use always spawn. That will guarantee that the bullet will always spawn no matter what happens. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set no fail to be true so that it has to spawn. There's no way that the spawning can fail. And we'll also set the owner as well. So the... The owner is going to be this. And we can also set the instigator as well. Why not? Instigator equals this. The instigator is the actor that is responsible for damage that is dealt by the thing we're spawning. So basically, when we spawn the bullet, the instigator is us. And so if we were to shoot someone, you know, we could use the instigator to check that it was us or, or whatever. So anyways, the next thing we need to do is go into spherepawn.h and we're going to add a u bullet. And actually what we want to use is something called t subclass of. And then what we want is a bullet like that. And I'm going to call this bullet class. And we're just going to copy and paste this bit here and just put that there. Except I'm going to give it the category of shooting. So now we're going to say that if the bullet class is not equal to null pointer, so that will basically make sure that we have selected a bullet class. And if we haven't selected a bullet class, nothing's going to happen, right? So only do it if bullet class is not null. Um, an easier way to do that is to write it like that. So we're just making sure a bullet class has been selected. And so what we're going to do is we're going to spawn a bullet using the bullet class. The next thing is, where do we spawn the bullet? So that's actually a good question. We need a transform, a location, a scale, and a rotation for the bullet. Uh, so let's go ahead and make a transform. And I'm going to call this bullet spawn transform. Okay, so uh, let's start with the location of the bullet. So set location. So where do we want to spawn the bullet? We want to spawn the bullet a little bit in front of the player, right? So so right in front of the ball, we'll spawn the bullet there. So um, to get the location right in front of my player, we would do get actor location. And then to get the bit in front of the player, we'd do get actor forward vector. So basically get the direction that's forward. And we're going to multiply that by say 500. And then we'll add the location of our actor to that. So, so there's a little bit of vector maths there. And basically that's just going to get the point that's right in front of the player. The next thing we need is the rotation of the bullet when it spawns. And we can just use get actor forward vector. Actually, we can just use that get actor rotation. So whatever rotation our player has, just make the bullet face that same rotation. And that should work fine. And you need to type dot quaternion because it wants a quaternion. And then the bullet scale, set scale. I don't even know if you need to do this, but uh, just do that. And now the, the bullet will have a normal scale of one. So um, now that we've done that, we can give it the bullet spawn transform. And the last thing is the spawn params. And there you have it.
that is the bullet being spawned in. So let's go ahead and compile and we'll try this out in the editor. Also, I screwed up something. Inside of spherepawn.h, you just want to make sure that you put class a bullet instead of putting class. I had class here, so just get rid of that and then just put it here so it says class a bullet instead. We just need to forward declare bullet basically. And then you should be able to click on local Windows debugger and it should run with no problems. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a blueprint out of my bullet. So just like I made a blueprint for the sphere pawn, I'm going to make a blueprint for the bullet as well. So we'll go ahead and right click, create blueprint, and I'm going to call this BP underscore bullet. And then in here, we'll go ahead and go to the static mesh and we're going to make this a sphere or what do we have? Do we really only have that stuff? Ah, if you click on show engine content, you should have access to like some spheres and stuff as well. So we'll go ahead and select the, I don't know, this one. Sure, that one looks fine. So yeah, we'll go ahead and use that. And if we go to transform as well, I'm going to set the scale of it to just be a little bit smaller because I feel like it's a little bit too big. And if you click on bullet movement, you should be able to go down and then like, you should be able to change stuff like the initial speed. But you probably don't want to because we've already set it up in C++. So you could change that if you wanted though. So go ahead and hit, uh, hit compile and save. Go into the sphere pawn now and you should have the option under the shooting tab to select a bullet class. I'm going to select BP bullet. And now for the moment of truth, does it actually work? I haven't tested this yet, so it very well might not work. But let's just try it out. We'll drag the sphere pawn in. Auto possess, player zero. Hit play. Check it out. We can shoot these bullets. Now one thing is, <laughs> they actually just stick to the wall, which is kind of funny. But we can destroy them as well. We can get rid of these when they hit the wall if you wanted to do that. So I find it kind of funny how they, they stick to the wall though. That looks kind of cool. Um, so how do you get these to destroy when they hit the wall? This is actually not too difficult to do. And we could actually, I could do a little introduction to blueprints as well actually because we haven't really done any blueprints yet. We've just been doing um, C++. Okay, so yeah, we'll do a little bit of blueprints because I can't really be bothered writing for the code for this either. And it's really simple. If we just go to functions inside of bp bullet go to functions override hit and you can read this but basically it's just an event that's called when the actor bumps into something so for example when this bullet bumps into the wall this event is going to be called and it's exactly like code um, in code you can say destroy actor we can do that in blueprints as well you just do destroy actor and that will destroy it basically so watch this hits the wall destroyed Pretty simple. You could do that in C++. It's totally possible, but I figure we'd just do it in Blueprints because it's kind of nice and quick, get it out of the way. And yeah, there you have it. We've implemented really basic shooting mechanic. I think we'll probably go on and, and do some other cool stuff with this though. And also, I think in the next video we'll change this so it's in C++, but I just wanted to show you a little bit of Blueprints as well. And then, who knows, maybe we could make a little game out of this. You fly around and shoot stuff and collect points or something. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll see where we go from here. But anyways, hopefully you've enjoyed video number four, and I'll see you guys in the fifth episode. All right, see you later.